All right, so um, this notebook is going to take uh, walk us through step by step through the near cam reduction. Um, it is very heavily based on the JWebinar 3 pipeline and imaging mode um, session. So I, I really recommend going back and checking out that webinar um, for, for like additional information and more details on how to run this pipeline. We've also set up this notebook um, with a lot of extra information in it. And the goal there is to have it be a reference for you to go back to after the webinar. So I am going to, you know, I'm not going to read through everything. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. Um, and jump to the, the parts of the notebook that we can execute. But I, I just want to mention that it's here as a way to go back and read about what, what, what we happened. So I, what happened, what we did today. So I recommend downloading it or getting it off of our website. It's, it's also available there. Um, so we have a table of contents that you can interact with to, to jump through different parts of the notebook. Um, an introduction that says, again, a little bit more about Sears, Sears pointing five, the, simu the, the simulated, um, what goes into simulating the data, the SAM mock catalog, um, <clears throat> and then write the two images that we'll be focusing on today. Um, we will, anytime we're making a change to the default uh, run of the pipeline, you will see a little green box that tries to explain the, the changes that we've made. So anytime you see a green box, it, 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 it is identifying a custom change that we've made to the pipeline. We've got some information about pipeline resources and where to find more information. Um, these are links to either JDocs or the GitHub repository or the, the software documentation. That's all. Um, I'm definitely not an expert on the pipeline, so um, please do reference some of these. There's a lot of great information here, um, pretty well organized to, to help you figure out what you need um, if, you're, if you're stuck on any individual step. Right. We have a little information on how to install the pipeline. Um, if you're doing this at home on your own computer, not using the JWebinar um, service. Um, so this would be instructions on how to install that. And again, we're using a specific version for this notebook, but this is not the newest version. You'd, you'd likely want to download the most recent version. The pipeline requires a lot of reference files, and these are things like darks and flat fields and all kinds of information about the detectors. Um, and so when you're setting up the pipeline, you don't need to worry about this today, it's all taken care of. But when you're setting up the pipeline for your own runs, you will need to specify both where to where you want the pipeline to save files. This is the CRDS path. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, I'm going to go back. You, you will need to tell the, the, the pipeline where to save files, the reference files, and where to download them from. So as it comes across a file it needs, it will contact the server, find the file, download it, and save it. Um, so, so this would be something that you need to do when you're setting up the pipeline. Um, we are using a very specific set of reference files, again, to match as closely as possible our simulated data. And so that's how um, this box is explaining how to set up like a very specific set that you want to use. Again, when you're using real data, you'll most likely want to use whatever the most recent up-to-date set of reference files is. And then we're, so the, we come to our, the first, um, if you're following along, we come to the first cell that we want to execute. And this is a check to make sure that all of our paths are set correctly. So I'm going to execute it with shift and enter. And it will print out that we've got um, paths to the reference files and to the, we're using the correct context file. Uh, there's some information about the system requirements, especially about storage space and memory that you would need if you're running this on your own machine. And then now we're at like we're start we're now we're going to start um, the notebook here. So we've got our first set of imports. So I'm going to execute this cell. It takes a minute. It's importing the part the pieces of the pipeline that we'll need and a couple of uh, scripts that we've written for our custom steps. And we're going to uh, oops sorry scrolling is hard. Um, we're going to import matplotlib and set it up to be in this case we've got it set up in line and so it won't be interactive in this notebook. That is the most um, like robust way to run this for everybody's different browsers. But if you're playing on your own and you want to, um, you can set this up to have an interactive way to play with plots. We're just going to make sure we're using the right version of the pipeline and that we have all of the environment variables set. These are just checks. Then we'll set up our output directory. And so, um, so you see over on the left here, 
um, that it just created the output directory and all of the outputs of this notebook will be put into that um, calibrated directory. Now, um, in, as we go through this pipeline, there are um, multiple ways you can call the pipeline and we try to demonstrate all of them at least once in this notebook. So you can call the pipeline through three methods. You can, from within Python, you can use the run method or the call method. And from the command line, you can use the strun command that can do the same thing. And so we've got some examples of how to do each of those here, but we'll go into more detail um, when we're actually running the pipeline. Finally, there are um, a bunch of parameter reference files that are, that are used in the pipeline. And this is how you can set up um, the specific parameters that you want to use for each step in the pipeline overall. And so, um, and we'll sort of play a little bit with these, but we've got, uh, we've provided parameter files that we want you to use with these steps. And so we're just going to define those here. And now we can look at one of them. We'll open up the parameter reference file for the stage one part of the pipeline, print it to the screen. And now I'm gonna scroll through this and you can see that um, we've got a bunch of dictionaries of different parameters. Um, there's a lot of information in here about the main pipeline and then each of the individual steps that are going to be performed as part of this, this stage. And for each step, there are parameters like input directory, output directory, and then and then step specific parameters that you can set in this reference file or in this parameter file. And if you set it in this parameter file and then run the pipeline with this file on like all the images in your directory, it's a, it's a, um, it will use those parameter values for all of the runs. I'm gonna collapse this down now by clicking over here on the blue just to get it out of the way. And then we'll, we'll just close the reference file. We're gonna move on to, to sort of the bulk of the reduction here. Um, and that is with the running the, the stage one, the Cal Web Detector one part of the pipeline. So this is going to apply, again, detector level corrections. The stage is used for all instruments. Um, and it's going to take these, it's gonna take the sort of up the ramp slopes of the images and collapse them down to count, to count rate maps. Um, so a lot of information here to, to learn more about this stage. Um, we have made a couple of changes to the default values here. Again, you can see these in green. Um, <clears throat> we've made a, a couple of changes here. The first is that there is one step um, called IPC step. This is a step that corrects for inter, inter pixel capacitance. Um, I think it is skipped by default in the pipeline, but since Mirage adds this feature to the simulated data, we do want to correct it out. So we are not skipping this step. Um, we, are, we are skipping the persistent step to save on time because right now our, our simulated data do not include any persistence. So we're just gonna skip that. We've already made these changes directly to the parameter file that, we're, that we'll be using. So um, when we use that file, we won't need to specify them. And then finally, we are using custom made gain maps for two of the steps, the jump and ramp fit steps. And the reason for this is that um, Mirage uses, a again, it it's, it's always comes down to a mismatch in reference files. Mirage uses a different value. It uses a single value for each detector, whereas the pipeline has um, location specific gain maps. And so we wanna use the exact same maps that were used to simulate the data. Okay, so now we're going to, there's a lot of build up here. Um, so now we're going to uh, run the pipeline using, sorry, yeah, run the pipeline using the run method. And so this is gonna be done from within Python. Um, and the way, I'm gonna skip right down to the, to the cell here. So we're gonna be running this on one image. Um, the images are stored um, in uh, the data directory that you'll, you'll pull them from. And we're gonna be running it on this one image the, that is um, the A1 detector of the F115 image, uh, panel. So with the run method, you first set up a call, like an instance of the, of the pipeline that you wanna call. So we're gonna call the detector one pipeline. And then you have to manually specify any of the parameters that you want to set. So we're gonna set the output directory for this, for this pipeline call that we want to save the results, like write them to file in our output directory. This is where we say we want to 
we're not going to skip that IPC step, but we do want to skip the persistent step. And then here is where we override, we force the pipeline to use our gain maps, the specific gain maps that we've created for both the jump step and the ramp fit step. And now that we've set all of those parameters that we want, um, now we, the, we finally just run the pipeline on the uncalibrated raw file with the, with the run command. So I'm going to execute this cell. Um, it prints out a little, scroll down here. It prints out a lot of information to the screen. It's kind of overwhelming, um, but it's telling you, if you go through it, it's telling you at each step what it's doing, which reference files it's pulling and where it's getting them from, and each of the steps of the pipeline that it's running. Um, so it's like initiating the DQ array. Again, I'm definitely not an expert on everything that this, this pipeline does, but it's nice that, it, that it's very verbose on what it tells you. Um, it's also, this step is going to take a while, maybe like a couple of minutes. Um, okay, so the, the, the stage one is done, and if we go over to our, on the left panel here, the output directory, you can see that there are two new images, or two new files. One is this underscore rate file. This is the count rate map um, that we're using. And then this is this rate ints file is the same thing, but it would have one extension for every integration, whereas these Sears data only have one integration for, for each exposure. And so these two files are actually the same for our purposes, and you could delete the rate ints file if you needed to save space. All right, let me go back out to here. Okay. All right, so that's stage one using the run method. And now we're going to look at how to use the call method. And so, I think I just went, yeah. Um, oh, actually, before we do that, let's look at what it, um, our output. So this, this cell is gonna plot a before and an after. So on the left, we have the uncalibrated raw file. Um, you can barely see any sources in it. You, if you look really closely, you might see this star right in the center. And on the right is the, the output, the count rate map, the output of the stage one pipeline. So now we'll use the call method. And the, the, um, there are a couple of ways to use the call method, and we'll show both. Um, one is that you are specifying manually, again, all of the parameters that we just said this time as a single dictionary that you can pass to the pipeline. So here we've got this set up for the second image we're playing with, the F277W image, the A5 detector, you see that right here. So I'll run this step again, it'll, it'll run for a few minutes and it will print a lot of information out. Um, and so the difference here is that instead of calling one instance of the pipeline and then manually setting the parameters, we can set them all in um, a dictionary. And then this is, it's printing out again all the information um, about what each step is doing. And I'm going to skip, I'm going to collapse this just for a minute to show you while that's running, to show you what it would look like as an, a, <clears throat> excuse me, the other way to run with the call method. And that would be, this is not a cell that will be running, it's a, it's a raw cell, but it shows you that if you want to use the call method, you can just, you can just pass the full the, uh, parameter file. So even instead of providing that dictionary of values, you just pass the parameter file and run it and it, and it, will, it will run the pipeline. Oops, something thing. Um, so this is still running. Um, okay, so I'm gonna collapse all of this info down because the, the file has finished running. If we go back to the output directory, now we've got two rate files, one for each detector. Um, go back out. And then the last step, so we've talked about the other option for the call command. The last step we show here is how you would run it using the st run command from the command line. And again, this is my preferred method when you're processing a ton of images because you can use, you can batch script it and it, it can, it's a lot more efficient, I think, than, than writing it all in Python. Um, so the, the way you would do this is you would specify, you know, use st run, and then you specify your parameter file, and because your parameter file is specific for the stage of the pipeline that you're running, you don't even need to call the, the stage of the pipeline, then all of the necessary information is included in there. The name of the raw file, and then here we are, again, forcing the two, um, we're overriding the gain maps 
to be used on those two steps. The rest of the custom steps have, or the rest of the customizations have been included in that parameter file. Um, okay, so now we have um, gotten to our first custom reduction step, and this is to remove the remainder of that um, uh, vertical and horizontal striping that's in the image. I'm going to scroll up to our display. It's kind of hard to see here, um, but there, but the striping that we're trying to remove is this is both this horizontal striping and there's some vertical striping left. If you're using Matplotlib in interactive mode, you could zoom in and see a little bit more maybe. Um, so scrolling back down. Um, so here's our uh, custom step. We've, we've written a, uh, a code, you can see it over here on the left panel called remstriping.py that's going to perform um, this, this process. And at the top in our import statements, we've already imported the function from this script that we're gonna be using. And again, the way, what it's gonna do is collapse the images along rows and columns. Um, and actually it does a couple of things. First, it removes the pedestal background, it masks out sources, and then it uh, applies a flat field to get a cleaner, flatter image. And then it collapses the images along rows and columns to measure the striping pattern, subtracts it out, and, and, and saves that file. Um, and so I'm just gonna run that here. And we're running it on both files at the same time in this loop here. I think maybe, we, yeah, let's set that up. And so that's done. And it's, it has saved two additional files. I'm gonna go back here. And so now the file that we want, the one that's been corrected is called, it's still called underscore rate. And the original file, the original rate file is, is, has been renamed so that you don't lose that, that file. But again, now we're, this is how we end up with a lot of disk space being saved or taken out. So now we're gonna look at a before and after, which will be a little bit less impressive than if you were to look, for example, in DS9 or, or close up. But you can see on the left is the original and on the right, we have removed some of the striping. You'll notice a couple of, of residual features here and those are part of the flat field that will be taken care of in the next pipeline step. So now we're going to move on to stage two, and so this is taking the the count rate maps and calibrating those image calibrating the images. So I think the biggest parts of this um, stage of the pipeline is applying the flat field and then putting the images, doing the the photometric um, like flux calibration step that will put them into units of megajanskis per steradian. Um, there's an additional portion of this step that that runs um, the resample step. And this provides a distortion corrected or rectified image for, for your reference. Um, but since that file is not used by stage three, we're, we're gonna turn that step off to again, save on time. Um, scrolling down, we will demonstrate how to do it again with the run method and then with the call method. So for the run method, we're gonna do the, the A1 detector, the F115 image. We um, call the pipeline we set our uh, specific parameters, and the only change we're making here is that we're turning off the resample step, and then, we'll, and then we call it. So I'll set that going. Again, it prints out all the information you wanna know about what's going on, how, what reference files it's, it's pulling, and what step of the pipeline it's on. And it's, this one's very fast, it's done. And we look over in our output file, and now we have an underscore cal file. So this is the calibrated output of the stage two pipeline. We're gonna do the same thing now with the, um, the F277, the long wavelength channel detector, and this time using the call method. So we're just gonna demonstrate um, the version where you just, you send the uh, parameter file to the call method. So I'll run this. Hold on, this is a much faster step than stage one. And it's already done. We've got our two cal files. Let me just make sure. Yeah, two cal files. Okay. And then here again is an example of how you would run this on the command line. Um, ST run, the name of the parameter file, and then your, your um, count rate map that you wanna to convert to a calibrated file. We'll plot the before and after here. 
So now we're showing this is the F277 image before the flat field correction and after, before the, the stage two, which includes flat field and after. And then you may notice, especially if you can zoom in, that here down in the, in the middle bottom of the image, we can start to see that feature that shows up on the A5 detector. And so our next custom step is going to be applying a custom flat field designed to measure and remove that feature. And so this step, back in the near chem directory, this step is coded up in the applyflat.py file. We've already imported the function, and now we will just run this, which is just applying another flat field to that one A5 uh, image. And that's done, and so now we will plot a before and after of that. Now you can see, um, hopefully we haven't changed much in the image except that feature down in the, um, in the right image, that feature is now gone and been removed successfully. So now we're going to be moving on to stage three and stage three is where you would create a mosaic of multiple images in a filter. So stage three, this is a, this is a part of the pipeline that does use those association files where you can list all of the um, images that belong together, for example, all of the images that are from the same filter. Um, we have made association files for you, um, and, and uh, we've used this function association from list, which you can read more about here. Um, so first thing I'm, we're gonna do is pull those files. So you'll see one of them shows up here for the F115 um, uh, Detect, uh, image filter, and now we're going to see what's in that association file. So this is giving the information about uh, the, the code, the information about what type of, of part of the pipeline we're running, the level three corrections, um, and then it lists the images. In this case, there, there are three dithers, so we've got three images that we want to combine into a single mosaic. Before we do that, we're coming to our last custom step, and this is where we run the sky match step, which is part of stage three, but we're gonna run it individually on each of our images first. Um, we have found that that works better, and again, that's because of the, the, the fact that we have simulated data. I don't think that when you have real data, you may be able to run them all um, as part of stage three. Because the stage three pipeline requires association files, the first thing we're gonna do is pull an association file for each individual image. Um, and then we're gonna, this, we'll, we'll do the first version run using the run um, method. So we'll initiate the step, we'll provide our uh, parameters, the name of the output file. And then here is where we are setting some uh, parameters specific to the sky match uh, algorithm. These are values that we have you know, tested a bunch in real and came up with the best options for these simulated data. So you would want to, to practice and run and try different options for your own data. We want, finally, we tell SkyMatch that we don't just want it to measure the background, we actually want it to subtract the background out and then we run the step. So run that cell. Completed pretty quickly, here's the output. And in our output directory, really quick, we can see that now there's this file called sky match step and this is the file where the background has been removed go down now we're going to do the same thing with the call method we'll pull the association file for the f277 image and then we'll use the call method where we provide the uh, parameter file for this step and where we put those those custom parameters into this file so that'll all be included And then we will look at a before and after of the sky values before we ran the step and after to see that the input file is this, uh, the sky is this uh, histogram in gray and the output after the step is in blue and it's nice and symmetric centered at zero. So we've, we've background subtracted our, our images now. And finally, an example of how you would run that individual step of the stage three pipeline from the command line. Now, so far we've only run two images, one for each filter through the pipeline. And now for stage three, we wanna create a mosaic where we combine multiple images from the same filter. 
to save on time, what we've done is stage these already reduced images somewhere else. And so you can, you can pull those. But if you were to be working on this on your own at home, we have this script right here called run dithers that you can run. Um, it's a bash script, so you can run it on the command line and it will, it will take each, it will take these other four images, two from F115 and two from F277. It will take them through all the stages of the pipeline up to this point. So, and there's some information on how to do that here, but because we're saving time, we've already got that set up. So um, today you don't have to worry about that. And here we are at the final stage three set. Um, it's, this is where we take, for, for each filter, we're gonna give it three images, one from each other, and it's gonna produce an output mosaic. It will also create a photometric catalog by running PhotoUtils. Um, we've got, we're going to do that today, but it's not going to be, um, we haven't yet like optimized the parameters for the PhotoUtils step. And so there will be an output catalog, but it's important to know that the, the photometry won't be great for these sources. The input and output won't match very well because we haven't optimized how to detect those, um, those sources in the image. Um, and then we've got a couple of changes that we've made here, and most of these are for setting the output pixel scale of the image. We're changing the output pixel scale from the native for, for the um, for the short wavelength. Instead of going from 0 0.031 arc seconds per pixel, we're gonna gonna drizzle this on a 0 0.015 arc second per, per pixel scale. This is one way to do it. The new version of the pipeline has another way, where instead of setting the um, ratio of the output to input pixel scale ratios, you can actually just specify the output pixel scale that you want. Then we've got our three. Okay, so now we're gonna, we, we're gonna make the mosaic for F115. So the first thing to do is to get right here, we're, we're pulling the data that have already been calibrated. Um, we're, we're, we're defining and pulling the, the association file that we wanna use for this filter. Then using the run method, we're gonna set up the pipeline, set up the parameters. We're going to turn off the tweak reg step. This is one that this step would find sources in the image and, and use them to align images really well, but we have not simulated any astrometric error in these images, so we can turn that step off. We're also turning off the sky match step because we've already run it and we are specifying the output pixel scale that we want to use as a ratio of output to input. And then we run the step. And so this will take a minute or two. I'm gonna pop up to see when this little asterisk disappears. We can look at the output too. So there's, again, a lot of output here, a lot of um, interesting things to read. It tells you, like, it's, you know, you can see that it skips your steps that you want it to skip, which is great. It's detecting, it's, it's looking at um, the combination of all three images to find any outliers and in individual images. Collapse this down a little. Oops, we lost, there we go. Um, and then now it's doing the drizzling process of combining um, the images. It saves um, individual files, underscore CRF, um, in your output directory, and these are these are files where cosmic rays have been have been flagged, um, so those are helpful to look at to see how your cosmic ray rejection is doing. Now it's drizzling and resampling um, not just the science image, but each of the other extensions of the file. So your all your variance maps, weight maps, um, and so it's it's doing a lot of work here. And this is one of the stages that is quite memory intensive if you start doing it with like a ton of images. Um, and this. This step uh, is done, which is great. We're gonna show for the F277, the long wavelength channel, we'll show how to do it using the call method. So same deal as before, we're calling it and we're just providing this pipeline uh, parameter file. So I'll run that step. Um, and our last step here, once this is done, is going to be looking at a, a before and after of, or I guess looking at, I think we're looking at the outputs of both filters. Um, and then we're done with the, the notebook here. Um, so I'm gonna let this, this finish running and just show you um, the last command of how you would do this stage on the command line. So same deal, SD run, your parameter file and the name of your association file. Um, we also have some information at the bottom of the notebook 
Um, if you uh, want to be running the full Sears 5 creating mosaics um, in both filters, in all filters actually, all six filters, you can download that whole set from our um, uh, website. Though note that it takes quite a bit of disk space. I think it's like 90 gigs of disk space. So here we've got last step here. We're showing the output mosaic of F115 and F277. Um, and since we've only done one detector of each, I will note that this entire F115 image shows up right in this lower left corner of the F277. Um, so we're looking at this little quadrant um, in this left image. Uh, yeah, and then just going back to our output directory, you can see not only do we have the images, this I2D, we also have a segmentation map for each filter and an output catalog. Um, where again, the photometry has not been optimized, but you can you have it there to play around with. 